Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a very special guest from China. I'm having a coffee break with a Professor Xiabu. He's a professor of innovation and strategic management at the Shushang University in China. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with cutting edge insights on regional development and innovation. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Professor, thank you very much for accepting this invitation to a coffee break with me. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you so much. That's my pleasure to join the interview. The pleasure is mine. I want to ask you about uh, your coffee today or if any, if any drink if you are having. I am having a very uh, special coffee from the region of Huila in Colombia. Mm. Mm. That's nice. Uh, but actually in China, we mostly drink uh, tea, which is the, especially in our era, green tea. Yeah, even though the young people like uh, coffee more and more. Yeah. Really nice. So personally, I prefer the tea. <laughs> I have to try that one. <laughs> Professor, um, I want to talk with you about your book, Global Manufacturing and Secondary Innovations in China. Could you please tell me what is it about? Actually, people see very fast rising of Chinese manufacturing. So China became the biggest country of the manufacturing right now. But what's the main reason for it? Yeah. So in my studies, we see that uh, the Chinese uh, manufacturing rising from the secondary innovation. We're following the different uh, ways to rise. So that's, uh, I think, is a very uh, necessary for us to dig out what's the, uh, what's the real reason for the rising Chinese manufacturing. So in my view, that's good secondary innovation. That is indeed quite, quite important um, for to know and also realize this concept of secondary innovations are is the key of, of your book. Could you please um, define it for me? In our definition, the secondary innovation, that's the innovation based on the introduced technology, not the originally generated by ourselves. So that's the secondary innovation. That's, uh, that's indeed very, very, a very crucial concept. Could you please tell me the, the findings of your book, of your research? Uh, because uh, my er research area is innovation management. And uh, especially when we see the theories and the methods developed by those developed nations, we try to link those original findings with the local companies, local economies. But in this, we find that Chinese companies doing the innovation in some way different, such as the dynamics of innovation that's revealed by Professor James Adebach many years ago from the United States. He said that the first innovation high frequency is the product innovation, and then the process innovation. But in China, we see that in our work, we find that uh, Chinese companies undertaking the process innovation first, then develop the product innovations. So that's the indifferent uh, dynamics. So in this way, we can enhance our technological capabilities effectively. So that's something uh, different and uh, we say the unique or yeah, that's a unique or can be learned by other developing nations. Yeah. I, can, I can imagine. Thank you for clarifying that. And uh, what was the reason behind writing this book? What was it, the, the personal motivation that you had to, to write this book? Actually, uh, my first degree is a double E. So I used to be an engineer. When we work to assimilating the introduced technologies. We see that the hard to make it, it's so difficult for uh, developing countries. Yeah, 
but uh, we see that uh, maybe we can find some more new ways. So in this way, I undertaking uh, research to the manufacturing uh, companies. We find uh, that our practice in the companies uh, following the different ways, not uh, as the way described by established uh, theories. So we say that uh, what's the mo most efficient ways? So we say that the dynamics of the secondary innovation. Yeah. So when, if we can uh, discover those uh, uniqueness, so we can do work more effectively. So that's uh, my personal uh, dream at first is that uh, how to make Chinese firms more effective, more competitive. So then we see the series. With the series, we studying our uh, company's practice. And again, we developing something new and develop our own series. And so that's uh, the physical way. Okay. I understand. Thank you for that. Very, very important indeed. And uh, I assume this uniqueness has um, a lot to do with uh, the practical implications, the policy implications of, of your book. Uh, could you please talk a little bit about that? What would you say are the, the key policy implications of your, of your research? The policy implications here is to say that uh, the government gave incentives to the uh, company in a right way, not a uh, uh, mismatch with the company's needs. So with the dynamics of secondary innovation, we see that our government policies mainly focusing on the technology acquisition with the project is called the Technological Transformation Plan. With this plan, the government gave the incentives to the company to introduce our local suppliers to be involved with the acquired technological systems. So in, uh, in our researches and the proposal to the government, we see that uh, we should uh, encourage the process innovation even more than the product innovation at the first Face. So in this, we could say the both the local and the central government in China, we uh, provided the uh, right incentives to the manufacturing uh, sectors. Yeah, so make those companies developing even uh, faster. So there are a lot of uh, um, policy implications and. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the manufacturing side, but also the innovation policies. We emphasizing the process innovation, especially. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's um, indeed quite relevant, I think, for the entire world to know. And um, this was a special edition of Coffee Break. So I really thank you for that. It's the first time we do um, an interview about the book. And it was indeed a very, very interesting read. So thank you again, Professor. I wish you all the best. I hope to meet you in person and see you again in the coffee break. Bye bye. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this academic publication, you can find here the link below. Find us on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube or listen to our podcast on Spotify. See you next time. Bye bye.